Alright, welcome back everyone. Uh, this is GSTAR321 here again. Back with more Resident Evil Code Veronica HD on the Xbox 360. This is part 3. Alright. So as you can see there, I've got my uh, hemostatic medicine now. I'm sweet to go and return it to that guy. Um, I'm not going to do it just yet though. I've got a few things that need to be done around this uh, military facility first. Most notably, I need to go back to that room where the red skeleton picture is, okay? And enter the passcode number, which is 1126 to get into that room, okay? Because uh, in the previous video, you know, it said that uh, ventilation of the bio-experiment room is complete. So that means I now have access to it. So I can use this, uh, I think it's called the biohazard card key. I think that's what it's called. I can use that to uh, actually enter this room right here. Okay, here we go. Biohazard card, there we go. Alright, so I can discard the key finally, free up another inventory slot. Fantastic. And this door here, the doorknob is missing. Um, we actually, you don't need to worry about that for Claire's playthrough. That's, uh, you come back through here with Chris Redfield on his campaign, you know you actually find a doorknob and go through that door but here we go so the passcode is 1126 okay 6 alright lock has been released and we go in now there's no items here except for one thing uh, grenade launcher rounds acid rounds okay they're really good so make sure you grab them they're just here okay these have long reach pretty much like the flame rounds um, so they're really good from shooting at a distance as opposed to just the normal uh, standard explosive you know the gray grenade rounds they really don't shoot that far however I think they are more damaging you know but you've got to get in a bit close so. here we go biohazard detected and that's one of those actually that's actually one of those albinoid creatures if you remember from the previous video you now we pulled up like a projector uh, that you know had some explanation they discharge electricity there we go just got shocked uh, you don't even bother fighting them or killing them just pretty much just run straight out you know you've only got 30 seconds or so to get out of here before once again the shutters are uh, closed you know and you'll get trapped in if you don't alright so plenty of time just run straight down the stairs Casually walking down the stairs, you know, it's uh, no rush clear, just take your time, no worries, okay? So there we go. And that is done. We now take this red skeleton picture back to the uh, tank diorama room and place it on the wall there. And by doing so, we'll actually get the gold key, okay? And that's needed to unlock a door in the palace. Alright? So just make my way there now. This is actually the fourth time, third or fourth time that I'm doing this. Because uh, the first time I tried recording... Uh, ooh, zombie, hang on. Alright, get rid of these fucking crossbows. Crossbow ammo. I hate, I really hate this weapon, like the stand. I love the explosive tip crop bows, but the regular crossbow is just fucked, okay? It is uh, weak. I hate the look of it. I just it feels like a primitive weapon, you know what I mean? Like it would have been good back in the samurai era or the stone age or whatever, but just give me a fucking gun, you know, like a shotgun. Um, but we actually get oh, there we go. There's the gold key. You actually do get a shotgun, but that's um in Chris's campaign. I just examined the diorama there and it said, you know, there's a space to put um there's a lock locked cabinet there as well come back here don't forget about that yeah there was actually a space where you could uh, put something in there in that diorama uh, that's done on Chris's campaign as well so no need to worry about that just yet and as I was saying before you know this is my third possibly fourth attempt at uh, trying to make this video because the first time I tried doing it something happened on my computer a pop-up some Java pop-up thing happened, you know, please update Java, and that just fucked up the whole capture process, you know, I was 45 minutes into it, so that was incredibly frustrating, so I had to start again, then something else happened, the phone rang, and I 
died, or I can't remember what happened, but that just fucked me up as well. Then the third time, uh, I was getting pop-ups like so-and-so's online, blah blah blah, you know, I forgot to disable. So, I was getting incredibly pissed off, so this run is actually completely flawless. It is simply running to the places I need to be, doing everything in that area, running to the next place, completing everything there. Okay, I know all the zombie locations. This is going to be flawless, okay? That zombie almost grabbed me there. That was a bit worrying after saying uh, this video is going to be flawless. Kill this zombie here. There's another zombie upstairs. I'm going to go kill him as well. Don't need to. Uh, but I just like killing everything, okay? I don't want to... I just want to kill it, you know, and be done with it. I don't want to run back here and get grabbed or some shit, so... These ones won't respawn, you know. Once you kill these guys, they're dead, so it's alright. Go ahead and do it. And he's a crawler. So fucked aiming this crossbow as well, man. This weapon is fucked. The sooner I can use it all up and get rid of it, fuck it. Okay, I'm done with it. Absolutely over it. I really... I like, uh... Now that I've played both campaigns, Claire's and Chris's, I have to say that I... Mm, look, I'm going to say that they're both equally enjoyable. Um, I did enjoy Claire's a bit more because it felt a lot more survival horror-ish. Okay, you're in mansions and doors and all that sort of shit. Chris's was a little bit more action-oriented. Um, but, you know, nothing in the lines of like Resident Evil 5 or anything like that. Um, but I do like the fact that Chris is a guy, you know, like I've said before, I hate playing as the chicks. He gets better weapons, you know, shotguns and all that shit. Um, before I keep talking, here we go. Um, this is a puzzle. Press that picture of the chick there, Veronica, okay? Uh, this one over here of the dad with the two twins, press that one. This has to be done in order, okay? So you have to do exactly what I'm doing. That red-headed guy there. Uh, this one over here with the plate in the background, press him. Over to this old guy here with the vase or, yeah, earthenware vase. Press that one. And the last one is the guy with the candlestick, the butler, okay? So that note I just read before when I was talking, um, that pretty much explains how to complete this puzzle, all right? But I know the order by heart now, so I'm not going to bother going through what needs to be done. I'm just going to do it, okay? Feel free to uh, read it and, you know, go ahead and figure it out for yourself. But it's a walkthrough video, so I'm not going to waste time doing that shit. Examine the vase, turn it over, okay? And there is a queen ant object, okay? A red ruby ant. That is needed to take to Alexia's, like, home or mansion, whatever you want to call it, okay? We haven't been yet that... Uh, sorry, we have not been there yet. Uh, we will in a second. I'm about to go there now. Uh, this is actually located through the door where the double you have to place the double Lugas on, the golden Lugas. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. First time I actually played this game, this was prob I'm going to have to say this is the most. This was the most creepiest part of the game. Oh, zombie! Fuck off! Fucking crossbow! Oh my god! This weapon is fucked. Yeah, so the first time I actually played this game, this was the most creepiest part for me. Um, I don't know what... I don't know. I don't know why. Basically, it sort of reminded me of the movie. You know, if you've been following the story, uh, Alexia is basically Alfred's twin sister. Uh, whatever. Twin, you know. Um, and... Apparently the story goes that she stays home in this uh, mansion. No one can see her, you know. Alfred doesn't let anyone see her or have visitors because she's apparently so beautiful and looking and all that sort of shit. Um, you know, if you read the memos and stuff, it says that you can see her occasionally sitting at the window, you know, see a shadowy figure in the window. And it sort of reminded me of Alfred Hitchcock's movie Psycho uh, when you first go up to the mansion and it does have a 
panoramic view of the mansion and the window. Um, that was creepy to me. Um, here we go. Examine this memo. All right. Uh, that's basically going to tell you how to do this puzzle that's coming up right now. Turn on the computer here. I'll explain it as we go. Okay. Just some completely weird video, YouTube clip, <laughs> whatever the fuck it is. All right. That dragonfly. Um, basically, what's going to happen is it's this is going to uh, power the clock over here, as you can see there. All right. Light is on. Uh, and what we need to do now is actually enter a password. I know the password. It is 1971, if you can't be bothered. Um, but basically, I'm just going to quickly show you how to do it here, alright? So it was left and right, alright? If you read the memo for the first number. So it's 1, okay? Then it was left. So that's 9 at the top there. Then it was right for the third number, 7. Okay, then it was 3 rights. So that was the first one. Right again. Right one more time. One. Okay, so 1971. Press B to get back out of that. Go over to the computer terminal and enter 1971 for the password. Alright? And you should be sweet. 71. Enter. Alright, there we go. And this is just sort of like a secret door. Okay, it's going to... Uh, Show us the route to Alexia's home, mansion, whatever. And inside the man- Oh fuck, yep, here we go. Alright, um, I did equip, as you can see I've got explosive bow tip ammo there. Um, I was too busy talking about other shit when I was doing that, okay, but uh, make sure you do have some of those here because you're gonna get- You're gonna meet a few of these guys here, okay? That's not the only one. Basically, when we make our way up to Alexia's mansion, just before we enter the doors, there's going to spawn two more, alright? Uh, I don't actually kill them, uh, I don't believe, from memory, because you can run past them. There we go, there's that fucking creepy laugh, alright? So that freaked me out the first time I played this game, I don't know. You know, we've got the heartbeats as we're going up the stairs here to... Uh, make you freak out a little bit alright so there's actually gonna be yep there's one there and there's the second one fuck I got hit twice and it was bull oh my god alright I'd probably recommend just killing these guys um fuck that is bullshit Jesus Christ yeah look just kill these guys okay they're fucked um I do believe I killed one of them later on. I can't remember if upon exiting this mansion I do kill one or when I come back because you actually do have to come back here again. Um, yeah, so I killed one of them and just ran past the other one. However, upon returning, both of them had like were there. So they probably respawn these guys. So it's probably best just to run past them, you know. Now I've got fucking bats going crazy, okay? These are the most fucking annoying enemies in the game. Fuck this, I can't get the aim there we Fuck no! Get the fuck off. There we go, Jesus Christ. I can hear one more. There it is. <sighs> Where the fuck is it? Fucking Oh there we go, Jesus Christ. They just fly around everywhere, okay? It's impossible to get an aim on them. Uh the handgun is really shit for dealing with them. Later on in this walkthrough video, we are actually going to find a part to upgrade and modify this handgun that we have, and that will pretty much give us burst fire, like three shots per button press, which is really good for taking care of those bats, okay? So we're inside Alexia's mansion now. It's really creepy. You know, oh, there's another fuckwit here. Okay, take care of him. I'll equip the explosive tip bows. Take about, they take two shots, okay, to kill. Um, if I was to just shoot that guy then, like, rapidly, just keep mashing X, you know, one, two, three arrows, 
Um, he would not die in two arrows, okay? He would die in three. I think there's sort of like... After you've shot him with the first explosive bow tip arrow, there must be like a... He must have like a invincibi sorry, an invincibility frame, so to speak, for like a second and a half or something. Because uh, when that second bow hits him within that time, it doesn't appear to kill him, but the third one does, alright? So, shoot him once, wait about two seconds, you know, one, to one and a half to two seconds, then shoot the other one, alright? Then that should just kill him in two hits. I also just lit the fire in that room there with my lighter. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what that does, okay? On my first playthrough, I didn't do that. Uh, reason being is because I actually went and got the lock pick before I came here. When you get the lock pick, as you can see the lighter there in the top right corner of my inventory, uh, when you get the lock pick, it basically replaces the lighter there, okay? You give the lighter to the the guy at the start of the game, as well as the hemostatic medicine. He focused, brother. Our enemy is only a little girl. Oh, why is this taking so long? My apologies, Alexia, but I have been doing my best. The revival of the Ashford family depends on your success, brother. I am aware of that, Alexia. I will revive the family name myself and make you the master of the glorious Ashford family. Do not worry, brother. I will handle them both myself. Who is there? Is someone at the corridor? What is it, Alexia? N nothing. I believe I must have been imagining things. Let us go, brother. Alright, so we just had a cutscene there of uh, Alexia and Alfred talking to each other. You know, this this is really survival horror for me because we're in a mansion, there's fucking creepy looking dolls everywhere, you know. There was a big doll hanging in the main room when we just entered the mansion, I don't know. This shit is fucked, okay? It fucks with your mind, it's just creepy shit, you know. Heartbeat, upon opening doors, fuck this, let's just get in there. Quip rocket launcher and just blow the shit out of the place, okay? Alright, nothing's gonna happen. It's got some freaky music playing, dolls and weird shit everywhere, okay? Yep, so we'll stop the music box, okay? And it locks. Now we've actually got the, uh... Oh, there we go, I forgot about that. It opens up that, and that's actually the silver key, okay? Uh, that will unlock two doors in the palace, so that's really nice, we need that. Alright, so what I'm going to do is put that red ant on top of this, alright? What that's going to do is it's going to open it back up again, and will allow me to take this music plate here, okay? We need to take this. Alright, so take that. Um, if you've noticed just behind me, there was a set of like ladders, there was like a ladder going up into the attic. You can't actually go up there yet, alright? So I didn't even bother, I couldn't be bothered showing you, you know. If you go up to it and press X, it'll say the uh, roof appears to be blocked off, alright? So, I'm just going to quickly check for items here. There's nothing more that can be done in this mansion. Um, is there anything over here? No. Picture. Just have a quick look before I get out of here, okay? It's only going to take like... 10 seconds. Alright, so there's that other chest here, right? Um, blue. So we need to find the blue ant. Um, once we put that on top of that, that will actually open the lid for that one, okay? And we put the music plate in this one, and that will unlock like a secret passage that we can go to. Um, up into the attic via, you know, get on top of the bed and go up that ladder. The uh, debris or whatever the hell was blocking the uh, area now will be magically removed, okay? But for now, we'll just get back out of here. We will go back to the palace and use the silver key to go into those two rooms, alright? See, look at that doll there just hanging up in the middle. And we've got like really creepy music here, you know, like Transylvania, fucking Castlevania. 
music, which is just fucking with me, okay? And these two big ass enemies are gonna be here, so I'm gonna just piss bolt past them. It's actually a herb there, which I wanna fucking grab if I. Gee, fuck off, okay? Fuck him, kill him. Red herb, alright, so I'll combine that immediately with the green herb. That heals full health, basically like a first aid spray. Is there anything else? No, alright. So yeah, I've killed that guy, right? Uh, I run past this one, because I just can't be bothered dealing with it. Um, however, when I return, both of them are there again, okay? Not just one, two. So, probably best not to even bother killing them, but, you know, that guy got in my way of trying to grab that red herb there, so... I just decided to kill him because I couldn't be bothered dealing with this shit, you know, getting slapped or grabbed a few times and and whatnot, okay? Uh, and like I said, you know, for Chris's campaign, I didn't utilize the crossbow once, alright? I don't believe I ever equipped it, didn't it? I, did, I think when I did start Chris's campaign, I had about four explosive tip arrows left and like 20 arrows, so I just thought, oh, this is fucked. And you don't actually find any more explosive bow tip ammo, you know, when you're playing on Chris's campaign, so probably best just to use it here on these enemies, you know, for Claire's campaign, because I do have a, a few, and in that du what's it called? I can't remember, du geranium case or whatever it was just there in my stash, that actually contains some more explosive bow tip arrows ammo. And we're going to find some more as well, okay? So, pretty much a plentiful supply of it. Um, but I do like saving it for the Tyrant boss fight uh, on Claire's campaign, okay? Because that uh, guy is a uh, fucking pain in the ass. You actually have to fight him twice. He's just this really tall figure. He's basically the boss, okay? Of Claire's campaign. Um, the first time you face him you have to actually damage him enough, he'll fall over, but, you know, you think he's dead, then you go get on the plane to escape here, and he's back, and that was a fucking annoying boss fight the first time I did it, because I had no idea what to do, you know, but I'll walk you through that when we get up to it, it's actually really, really easy, but for that fight, you're going to want to save a bit of ammo, you know, preferably bowgun arrow, Ammo, explosive bow tip uh, arrows because I believe it does stagger him a little bit once you shoot him once then twice he does stagger a little bit backwards okay so the more you have the more you can sort of stagger him and and all that sort of shit you know you need to buy you really need to uh, buy time on that boss fight with him all right so we'll go into this uh, other door here that was previously locked we'll use the silver key on it and that should be the last time we need it. We can discard that, free up some space. Yep, beautiful. Alright, there's another uh, big ass enemy here. Take care of him. Fuck, he got me. Ooh, there's another one. Alright, kill him. There we go. So, as you can see, I shot the bow once, okay, then I waited about one and a half seconds before shooting the second one because. Like I said, you know, for about one second I think they do have a invincibility frame. Uh, so if you shoot them once and then immediately press X and shoot the second one, you know, within a second or less, it will not kill them, okay? They will take another shot to take down. So always wait about one and a half, two seconds before firing off that second shot. Just so you can serve your uh, explosive arrows, you know. I'm probably over-conserving shit here, alright? I could probably just be killing all these big-ass enemies I see as I'm going through it, but I, I really can't help it, you know? I've been scarred too many times in the past playing these types of games, especially Resident Evil 2, you know, this one as well, back in the day, you know, over a decade ago. I actually got uh, as far as the Tyrant boss fight with Claire, you know, in this campaign, and I had about five handgun I can't even remember, I maybe had about 10 or 15 handgun bullets or some shit, you know, a couple of crossbows, 
Uh, I went crazy with grenade launcher rounds, you know, I used all of them up. Used all of the explosive bow tip arrows on normal zombies. And I couldn't progress any further, which uh, pissed me off because back in the day, you know, I didn't spend hours and hours playing these types of games a day, you know. I'd spend like an hour a day, then I might not touch it for a few days, and then I'd, you know, jump on, have another 45 minutes an hour at it, whatever. So it would take me like two weeks just to get up to him, and then I'd realise this is fucked. I have no ammo, I can't progress anymore. I've spent two weeks getting up to here. I fucking hate this game, okay? So after learning, you know, after playing games so many times and, and that sort of shit happening to me, I've learnt conserve, 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 alright? And that's almost led to an OCD playstyle where I conserve everything and use nothing, okay? So I'm talking about finishing Resident Evil 4. Oh, there's a couple of guys here actually. I just run past these. Fuck off, man. I was about to say they never usually hit me, alright? So that was a bit bullshit that he just uh, slapped me then. I'll probably end up killing him on the way back. Just because I, uh, you know, I've got enough explosive bow tip arrows there, so who cares? Um, yeah, so actually, before I continue what I was saying, we're actually going back to the prison area now. Uh, we picked up that eagle plate. So if you remember where the guillotine was in the prison area, that's where we need to use that. And I'm actually going to go back to that guy, give him the hemostatic medicine, and get my lock pick off him as well, okay? Zombies just run... Oh my fucking god. Okay, that is so annoying. There's another one here, hopefully it doesn't... Yep, good. Yeah, so you know, conserving is my play style now. Um, it's taken to the extreme, possibly an OCD disorder, whatever. Um, I finished, you know, we're talking finishing Resident Evil 4 with six gold chicken eggs, seven, her, you know, first aid sprays, 450 shotgun shells, you know, 150 handgun ammo and whatever, 50 rifle ammo and, and a rocket launcher, you know, so... You have to balance it out a bit, you know, don't go to the extreme like that um, and for this playthrough you know I do try and balance it out a bit uh, so I do start using explosive bow tip arrows a bit here we go what are you doing here you must have a medicine how kind of you thanks Here, let me help you with that. Thanks, but I can take care of myself. Just go. Keep it. It was a gift from my brother, but... Thanks. Here, let me give you this in return. You might need it later on. Now go. Don't worry about me. Alright, so we've got our lockpick off him. And talk to him again. What are you still hanging around for? Get out of here. Yeah, he just tells you to fuck off, okay? One more time, yeah. Alright, so he's got our lighter now. Who cares? Uh, we don't even need it at all. And I've now got the lockpick. There are actually... From memory, there are actually four locations where you can use the lockpick. Three of them are in the military training facility. One of them is actually that case that I have in my stash, okay, which contains the explosive bow tip arrows. Um, fucking zombies are just grabbing me like crazy. This is bullshit, okay? This one's probably gonna... <sighs> I have to keep checking my uh, health there, you know, because I'm not saving these runs for an hour. I'm doing like an hour videos here. So I don't want to fucking die here and have to start this shit a fifth time, you know, because like I said, this is like the fourth time doing this. Alright. Oh, actually, I've just remembered that, uh, we... Okay. Uh, okay, hang on, let me just kill these. Fuck, he's coming a bit fast. Get the... You fucking motherfucker. 
the fuck out of here. Kill this one. If you remember in the previous video, I was talking a little bit about Chris's campaign, okay? Um, <clears throat> I, got, I got through that pretty easy. However, it would have been even easier if I was able to get the Magnum handgun, okay? Now, to get the Magnum handgun... Please deposit any metallic items you have. Yep, so here we go. Box. To get the Magnum, you actually need to get this uh, fire extinguisher here. Make sure it is very important. Do not forget to take this back, okay? Um, at, on the very first video of this walkthrough, you know, we actually used that to uh, spray out some fire. Um, and on my first playthrough, I thought that was it. You know, I just left it in that deposit metal detector deposit box there for like the rest of the game um, but later on you'll come up to Chris's campaign and there is another fire section and we actually need a fire extinguisher I searched everywhere for it on Chris's campaign okay there is no fire extinguisher to be located you must uh, make sure to remember to grab that fire extinguisher out of that safety, safety security deposit box and put it in your stash, okay? Because uh, Chris will have access to all the items in Claire's stash. So, as you're coming back here to do this section of the game, you know, back to the prison area, make sure you grab that fire extinguisher. is very important because that magnum uh, would have just made things a hell of a lot easier, okay? It is very powerful. Um, I have done basically when you finish. Oh, there's a stash here as well. Forgot about that. Uh, you can so you can just whack it in here. Okay. Push this out of the way. Go through this door here. This will actually. <coughs> sorry, this door will actually take you back to the other side of the metal detector. All right. So if you remember, we deposited a few items. Um, in this metal de uh, metal detector deposit box here, first aid spray, a couple of grenade launcher rounds. All right, we couldn't Please bring it through the metal detector area, uh, but we can now. All right, box. because we do have access to go back out through that door. So first aid spray, grenade launcher rounds, and a couple of ink ribbons. I think that was it. Yep. And we'll take it back out this way. All right. Go through this door again here, okay, which was previously blocked by that box before, you know, we couldn't get out. But now we can freely move in and out, which is really nice. Whack it in the safety deposit box here. Save it for the tyrant boss fight later on in this campaign, and um, you should be sweet, okay. Put the fire extinguisher in there. Yeah, the, the Magnum is a very, very powerful weapon. You are going to want to grab that for Chris's campaign, okay? Um, like I said, the first playthrough, I never actually used it because I didn't bring the fire extinguisher with me. Um, but when you finish the game, you unlock what's called Battle Game, okay? I talked about it in the other video. Basically, it's just a, sort of like a mercenaries mode. You know, you pick a character, Claire, Steve... Chris or even Wesker you can pick, okay? And you just run through a predefined set of rooms that contain zombies and different enemies. Um, and you just gotta try and get through clear out the rooms as quick as possible and uh, clear it in the least amount of time, okay? Now when you select Chris to play as, he all the characters in the game have a set, you know, weapons that they use. So Claire's got explosive tip crossbows. Uh, Steve's got dual submachine guns. Wesker, Wex, Wesker actually only has a knife. Um, I've actually got an A ranking on everyone's in the battle game so far, uh, except Wesker. Okay, you have to go through room by room with only a knife. It is fucked. It's going to take me a long time to do that. Uh, I just haven't had the patience to sit down and do it. You know, I've given it a couple of tries, but I've just been getting fucked up with it, so. I couldn't be bothered, okay? Um, yeah, but if you select Chris, he actually has the Magnum. Now, upon using that, the Magnum is phenomenal, okay? One shot to anything will kill it, okay? Any enemy in the game, one shot with the Magnum, they die. It is a fucking powerful and awesome weapon. 
all right and sometimes you actually if you get in sort of close enough or get the angle right you can actually shoot the zombies heads clean off and it just makes this popping sound you know and their heads explode it is fucking awesome okay so I really want to make sure that for these walkthrough videos on Chris's campaign later on I get that magnum okay because I really love that weapon alright so here we go we're just clearing out a few rooms now a couple of zombies they're on fire <coughs> This is actually the room that we get the uh, modified handgun part for clear. Alright, modified handgun attachment, whatever. It's over there in that case to my right. Just kill this zombie first. Still alive, fucking hell. Alright. Three, alright, that should be it. Handgun ammo here, grab that. Can't get enough handgun ammo, okay. Looks like I've got heaps, but... It'll be chewed up fairly quickly later on, you know, especially in Chris's campaign. So I'm just going to use the lockpick straight off the bat on that lock for this ca case here. And there we go, an enhancement for the M39R handgun. So you combine it with your handgun and bang, there you go. You can hold 20 bullets now as opposed to 15, which was, uh, which was what you could previously hold and it does burst fire rounds which is really good okay especially for taking out bats because bats are fucked and you know trying to pull off single shots on them is absolutely fucked all right and here we go if you paid attention before when i was speaking when we actually came in through this way uh the body bag started moving so this is why we're getting this freaky heartbeat thing now upon opening this door because uh yeah as you can see the body bag there is gone let's go over here this is actually the anatomist here going absolutely crazy he's a little bit tough right and quick so immediately hold the right trigger and just start spraying him with your modified handgun right let's take care of him there we go all right so if i wasn't quick about doing that he would have uh, closed in ground fairly quickly on me grabbed me and you know started eating me which would have pissed me off so pick up this eye here which is what he drops all right this is like a key which we take over here and stick in the uh skeleton or the statue of this guy here medical statue whatever all right and it unlocks a secret way down here Bats, okay. Fucking annoying, but I've got my uh, modified. Look at look how much easier this is. All right. Oh, look, you're chewing up a little bit more ammo, but who cares? You know, you're not getting hit, you're not getting fucked up, and you're not cursing. All right. Pick, just picked up a green herb there. That was good. All right. So this is the area that we go to to actually get our. Uh, Ooh, a couple of there's about three zombies here okay make sure you take care of them they're dead all right this one all right all dead yeah so this is the area that we actually get a uh, piano roll item okay basically if you remember previously in this uh, video a bit earlier on we went into the uh, in the palace there was a room upstairs to the left which we used the silver key on when we entered there there was a piano all right basically you use the piano scroll the item you find here on the piano and it will start playing the melody on the scroll automatically okay uh, once it does that it'll unlock a secret door or area whatever and it will actually give us the blue ant sapphire ant whatever which is what we need to take to alexia's mansion and complete that puzzle there all right but here's just an easy puzzle there's just a sword here okay grab that straight off the bat it's going to trigger a trap once you do you know gas will enter the room here we go but uh you'll notice there's just a pole sticking out on this statue just run over to it and push it 
extremely easy puzzle, okay? If you can't figure this out, you should probably stop playing video games and just go pick up Hannah Montana for 12 bucks and, you know, try and 1,000 that or whatever. But, you know, very, very easy. And there'll be a slot here in this Iron Maiden. Uh, put the sword in here. Now, be careful. A zombie is going to come out of this thing, okay? It is going to freak you out first. Yep. Alright, so that fucked me up the... Oh shit, look how fast you started walking there, you motherfucker. Oh, this is fucked. I should just be using the... Yep. Okay, should have just used the handgun on him. This is horse shit. There we go. Alright, so if you're playing it the first time, that part's going to fuck you up. Okay, it'll freak you out if you're not prepared for it. And actually, the first time I did this, um... Yeah, I shit myself, okay? So I just picked up the piano scroll there, and we're completely done for this area now, and I'm just going to make my way back to the palace, and use the piano scroll there. This is really flowing quite smoothly, this video, this walkthrough video, basically just running from one area to the other, completing all things that I need to do in one area before moving to the others. Okay, uh, whereas in my first playthrough, what I did was, uh, for example, as soon as I got the hemostatic medicine, you know, I ran straight from the medical faci um, training facility, military training facility or palace, wherever, wherever I was, straight to the guy, gave him the hemostatic medicine, ran back, finished what I was doing, and then I had to come back here anyway, you know, and do all this sort of shit. So, now that I've played it a couple of times, you know, I'm all about saving time and uh, completing one area completely before moving on to the next. And this is actually going to be imperative if you're planning on doing the rocket launcher, uh, sorry, rocket launcher run. Um, you know, like I said in the previous video, you've got to complete the game in under 4 hours and 30 minutes. You have to get an A rank on the game basically, okay? You can't use any first aid sprays. You can't save the game except during the transition from Claire's to Chris's campaign. Um, there's a whole lot of other factors involved. I will talk about it more in depth a bit later on, probably when I get to Chris's campaign, because there is actually a point system involved in that. Um, basically, in or order to get an A ranking, I can't remember, but off the top of my head, you've got to get about 8,250 points or something like that, okay? If you save the game, you lose 1,000 points, um, and every time you save the game after that, you lose another 50 points. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of factors involved. Um, for example, you know, you complete, say, if you complete the game in four hours or three hours and 30 minutes, whatever, but you save the game, it is still possible to get an A ranking. Okay? Or, for example. If you complete the game in 4 hours and 30 minutes exactly, um, you, s you don't save the game at all, but you use a first aid spray, um, I'd say it is still possible to get an A ranking on this, okay, and get the rocket launcher. But I'm going to have to double check that because I do have the list on my computer. Um, it is a point system, alright, in terms of what you, you know, need to do. So we'll talk a lot more about that later on probably when I get to Chris's campaign, okay? After doing this walkthrough video, you know, I think I'm going to be pretty sweet in terms of doing the rocket launcher run, uh, because, you know, I am playing this game a lot now for doing these walkthrough videos, so it'll just come naturally to me, you know, it should anyway, what I have to do. The only thing I'm concerned about is the actual puzzles, for example, you know, enter code number, whatever, to unlock this door, enter the password to unlock this computer. I'd say you're going to have to have all those sort of passwords um, written down on a piece of paper next to you, just so you're not wasting any time completing puzzles needlessly. Okay, so for example, in this video at the start, well sort of at the start if you remember, there was that clock puzzle, okay? 
uh, basically we turned on the computer, you know, it powered the clock, then we had to turn the clock a few times. I'd say that would have wasted a good about three, four minutes, you know, just doing that puzzle alone. Whereas if I just turned on the computer, hit the, enter the password, bang, you know, would have just ran straight through the secret door there instead of wasting time turning the clock knobs and all that sort of shit, okay? So for w rocket launcher run, I'd say that's what you'd need to do. That's what I'll be doing anyway. It's gonna be fucked, okay? I hate achievements like this. I mean, I guess they're called achievements for a reason, you know, it is an achievement. Um, but yeah, it's fucked, alright? Ooh, there was a first aid spray in there, that's really nice. So all I'm doing now is, uh, before heading back to the palace, you know, to put that piano roll in the piano, I'm just going back to the med, uh, sorry, military training facility, and I'm unlocking all the locks that were previously locked before, you know, now I have the actual lock pick, so I can go ahead, unlock the cabinets, whatever, drawers, and take the items from that. So I just picked up the first aid spread, sorry, first aid spray there, which was really nice. Down here there's going to be a cabinet with some acid rounds for the grenade launcher. You're going to want to grab that, okay, that's really good as well. Um, and just as I did enter, I actually ran into that office area and grabbed handgun ammo out of one of the drawers as well. So there's, you know, pretty much when you get the lockpick, there are three locations in the military training facility that require the use of the lockpick, okay? So just make sure you do this before you go back to the palace and uh, finish off there, okay? So there's acid rounds there. Because uh, when you get to Chris's campaign, okay, he does not have a lockpick. So, you know, if you get to Chris's campaign and you see the acid rounds still sitting there behind that locked cabinet, you will not be able to unlock it, okay? You're going to be going, this is fucked. I wish I did it in Claire's campaign. So that's why I'm doing this now. You know, it's probably only going to take about 2-3 minutes at most to do all this shit, so who cares. I'd say for the rocket launcher run, I probably won't even be bothering with it, okay? Um, six grenade launcher rounds, probably not necessary anyway, in terms of completing this game. So I won't really be bothered. I mean, I'm just doing it now, because I just want to have as much shit, you know, ammo and all that sort of stuff in my inventory as possible to make this game just go completely smoothly. Make these walkthrough videos just flow really, really easy. Okay, I don't want to be running around with seven hand handgun bullets having to fight a fucking boss, tyrant, whatever. Okay, that's fucked. So that's all I'm doing now, alright? And there's actually those two guys there. I'm just going to go ahead and kill them. Pretty much... I'd say 99% of the time, if you just run past them, you won't get hit, okay? You should be sweet if you just sort of stick to the left and keep running, okay? But, you know, I've got a fair bit of ammo for that uh, explosive bow tips there, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it, alright? doesn't really matter. Alright, we're uh, on our way now. Now, we're going to get a cutscene right now with Wesker. Here he is. You must be the lovely Claire Redfield. Who are you? Let's just say that I'm a ghost, coming back to haunt your dear brother. Wesker? It seems there's not much explaining to do, is there? I was the one who attacked this island. Who'd have thought you'd be hanging about? <laughs> All the better for me. Now that the cat dragged in this nice surprise, your ever-so-caring brother will definitely show up. I must thank you for being such good bait. I don't know what went on between you two, but you have them all wrong. My brother is not the kind of person you think he is. I despise Chris. Uh, what are you going to do to him? <laughs> what? What is it? Stay there. 
I'm coming. It appears you may be of some further use to me. I'm going to let you live a little longer. Alright, so there's Wesker. Look, like I've said in the first video, I'm not really sure who he is. I think you have to play the first three games to sort of really understand who he is, you know, what his role is in this game. Basically, from what I can gather, he is like Chris's sergeant, captain, whatever you want to call it, okay, for the stars. Uh, SWAT, whatever the fuck they are, police department, I don't know. Um, but obviously there's something wrong with him, you know, his eyes just flashed red then, so he's probably injected himself or been injected with the T-Virus, um, I'm not really sure, but in Resident Evil 5, you know, he's actually the final boss in the game and he does turn into a big ass fucked up creature, okay? So I'd say uh, something's gone wrong with him, but I'm not too sure. You know, like I said, doesn't hamper my enjoyment from this game. This game is outstanding. Uh, probably, I'd have to say this game is in the top 10 uh, of my favourite games of all time, okay? This game is just a classic. It is absolutely survival horror at its best, alright? I love it. So here we go, we've got the piano scroll now. We'll stick it straight in here. Just use that, it'll start playing a melody. And there is our blue ant king. Alright. Yep, grab that. Nothing left, okay. So I've got my music plate now out of the stash. I've got my Ant King, Blue Ant King. I'm sweet. All I need to do now is go back to Alexia's mansion, put in the Blue Ant King uh, on that music box. It'll open the lid and then put the music plate in. Once again, you know, it'll start playing another melody and it will actually free the way into the attic. attic. Okay? And that will actually give us the final proof, okay? Ooh, there was a blue herb. Yeah, there's a blue herb back here. I keep forgetting about grabbing that, okay? It's uh, pretty hard to spot items in this game. You know, the first time I played this game, I was just hugging the walls and mashing X like crazy. Um, but when you've gone through it a couple of times, you sort of know the location, so you don't bother doing that. Just a few zombies are going to spawn here, okay, on your way back to the mansion. I don't know if you really need to kill them, you know, but I'm just doing it anyway because they don't respawn, you know, on your way back. There'll be none here. Um, I don't want to get fucked up, you know, bitten or grabbed anymore, so I'm just over it. Now, I believe that these two big-ass guys here, let's have a look. One. There's one. Where's the other one? There was a, yep, see, there's two. Yep, there we go. So, you know, probably pointless to keep killing those guys. They're just going to keep respawning. So, just fuck it, okay? Don't even bother. A few zombies in here to take care of, okay? Alright, we'll just make our way back up. There's going to be a few more zombies along this walkway here. Take care of them. If you're really hardcore, you know, about conserving and all that sort of shit, you could be using the knife here. It's actually not a bad weapon if you actually know how to use it, okay? So with my experience playing as Wesker in the battle game, you know, he only gets a knife to uh, take out the zombies and enemies in the game. Um, it is actually not bad, okay? It can take down even those big ass yellow guys in a few slashes, but you've really got to get the timing right. Um, I can't be bothered dealing with it, okay? So I'm just going crazy with the handgun here. And here we go. Just put in the blue ant king. It'll open it up. Put in the music plate. There we go. 
Yep. So there's the ladder. Alright, very simple. Straight up. Oop. Accidentally hit no there. Heart beating, okay. It always does this heartbeat shit when you're entering a new unknown area. Alright. Trust me, there's nothing to fear up here. There's no enemies or anything. And we've got some uh, cool, creepy music happening here. Alright, so there's actually a keyhole right there, okay. We find a dragonfly just over here. There it is, alright. Just grab that. That's actually the key that we put in that ant's mouth back there, alright. Just quickly do a run around and check for items. I don't think there's anything here. Yeah, there's nothing here. Alright, before you put it in, check it and it'll actually give you the option to detach the wings there. Alright, there we go. And now you use that in the slot, okay? If you try and use it with the wings, nothing will happen, alright? So make sure to check it first, detach the wings, then put it in the slot. And it just turns that there. And we can go up that second ladder, and that'll take us right to the top of the attic. It's basically Alexia's study, okay? Just a couple of memos from memory. Interesting reads. Newspaper clip, there we go, yep. Alright, there's some handgun ammo here, make sure you grab that. Ink ribbon on the table. If you want to save your game here, by all means go for it, okay? I'm not going to bother because uh, I'm just going to be saving this once every, you know, once I've come towards the end of the hour for the walkthrough video. I know what's coming up, you know, it's all good. Push this box over here. There's actually a memo up there. Uh, once you've finished reading the memo, there'll be an item underneath the memo, okay, which you can take. And that is actually the Air Force proof from memory, okay? So I've already put in the Navy proof in the at the airport in that slot. Remember there was three slots there? Um, yep, there we go, Air Force proof. So if you remember at the, yeah, at the airport there were three slots, hexagonal slots, okay? So I've put the Navy proof in one of them and there are two free slots left. I have an Army proof in my stash and I've just picked up the Air Force proof. So I can go ahead back to the airport after all this is done and uh, yeah, go ahead and get on that plane, go from there. Blair Redfield, hold it right there. We meet each other at last. A pity I must say goodbye so soon. I am Alexia Ashford. For the pride of the Ashford family, I will kill you. Wait! What's going on? Ah! Steve! A secret door! Uh, after her! Are you okay? I'm fine. It's just a scratch. Alright, so there's just a secret door. Examine the wig and I'll trigger another cutscene. Here we go. This must be... What? No! Wait a second. What just happened? So there never was an Alexia after all. You mean, he thinks he's two people? Okay, that's it. Let's get out of here. The self-destruct system has that been That freak! Activated. He's trying to blow us up along all with the entire facility. Come on, we gotta get to that airport. Right. Alright, so I've said it before, <clears throat> um, and I'm gonna say it again. 
the dialogue in this game is fucked, okay? The voice acting is absolutely terrible, especially from Alexia and Sir Alfred's character. Whoever done the voice acting for that, fucking hell. It is so bad, it is funny, okay? But for some reason it keeps me entertained, you know? Um, and that's what, uh, you know, video games are about, just entertaining you, so... This is pure entertainment, alright? Alright, so that's it. Oh, you f Oh shit, that was... Ha! He just tried- he just spewed on me. I've never seen that before. That is the first time I've seen a zombie spew, okay? That was crazy, alright. Anyway, um, we are done pretty much for this uh, walkthrough video, okay? I'm just gonna run back, save it, you know. Fucking, oh man. Fucking hell, this is fucking bullshit. Fucking hate those guys, okay? Yeah, so we are uh, pretty much done for this walkthrough video, okay? It's been about an hour now. Um, as you can hear, the alarm's going off now, alright? You're under no time pressure, don't worry about that, you know, you don't have a certain amount of time to get to the airport by. Nothing's gonna blow up, alright? So this is just sort of to keep pressure on you, you know? Just a little tactic the developers, sorry, the developers have used to, uh, indicate there's some kind of time pressure on you when there actually isn't, okay, so don't worry about it. Take all the time you want, do what you want to do first, and then go ahead to the airport. So, I'm going to uh, clean up my inventory here, take what I need uh, in the airport, alright. We'll actually get to save, there is actually another save point and stash at the airport there, alright. So don't worry too much about carrying all this shit now, you know what I mean? Um, it's not really necessary at this point from memory. But I actually can't remember if the tyrant fight, the first tyrant boss fight, uh, occurs before then or not. I'm not too sure, so that's why I'm stacking up now. But uh, anyway, that'll be it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, that was a really smooth walkthrough video there, okay? I just pretty much went from point A to point B, no probs. Alright, that's it. See you in the next video for part 4. See ya.